Hello. Well, today I wanted to talk about the uh, Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace, which I, got to, I saw in theaters uh, for the film's 25th anniversary. Of course, it just stops at episode, or I guess technically episode. There's no E. But yeah, I saw this in the theater again. And well, at this point, it seems like a tradition. Whenever it's my birthday, which it is today when you're seeing this, I talk about Star Wars. So, yeah, um, 25 years ago to this day, I actually saw this film in the theater. And uh, I know that some will say, how could it be possible that you saw this film on your birthday when it came out? May 19th. Well, I believe I said this five years ago, but I don't know. It's the last time I talked about this particular film for the its 20th anniversary, and I also did subsequently uh, the the all, I talked about all of the Star Wars films, like the six um, afterwards, and, and um, yeah. Six of them, you know, not necessarily all at once, but I did uh, talk about them. So by the year's end, <clears throat> I had talked about all the individual ones. So, and the playlist that I have for this series, you can find those. Um, but yeah, I saw this. It was a a special thing in that. Uh, decided that you know I, um, like every state here in America at least I'm pretty sure the major cities at least because you know, I live in Des Moines um, they would get to see you know this film three days early and then three days later it would come out proper uh, and as I recall that uh, this had multiple times like for the day um, so it was sort of like an all-day thing, and then three days later you could see it again, and then again afterwards. Um, and watching this film again in the theater, uh, it was amazing. You know, I saw it twice. You know, uh, on my birthday in ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, and then three days later I saw it again when it properly came out and I saw like this in 2012 when they had it in 3D <clears throat> and all the subsequent films were supposed to be re-released in 3D but then with Disney's acqu accusation, acquisition of the properties and Lucasfilm um, those have never uh been released since so yeah so who knows if uh, those will ever be re-released but yeah here is a <laughs> yeah this is it, it, seeing this again was really cool it was uh, it was fantastic I uh, Again, I, I enjoy that. And I know a lot of, there are many people who aren't the biggest fans of this film, but I've noticed as time has gone on, a lot of people have uh, responded quite well to this. And, and I'm pretty sure I said this five years ago, but if not, or maybe I did it, but it just wasn't super clear because that happens sometimes with me but i always believed that this film and well all three of these of the prequels you know come on would always be looked at as being viewed more favorably and um, as time has gone on, it seems like that is the case. 
Um, now, the reason I'm showing these three, as well as also having a... the original trilogy, and uh, if you're wondering why I have them like this, it's because, well, gave my mom the other DVDs, and plus, this helps with the shelf space, so kind of works out, but yeah, I gave my mom the bigger, thicker, <laughs> normal DVD cases. Though I do keep, I uh, did keep the bonus uh, disc for the original trilogy, and these are the ones that have the, uh, the limited edition, unaltered, uh, original trilogy before, you know, George Lucas had uh, enhanced stuff added into them. Which, at the time, were very well received, but as time has gone on, uh, people didn't receive them too well. And, you know, perhaps for some of the critiques of certain additions added, you could say that's yeah, fair, but in others, it's they kind of go off. And it's like, well, no, it's just, you're just going off. Uh, and it's not even necessarily a critique anymore. That's fairly reasonable. Just like, you know, George Lucas always wanted these to be a lot more, have a lot more stuff going on in them, especially with this film. You wanted this to be, have a lot of life. And so what he was able to add a whole lot of stuff to this film in certain scenes you know, the X-Wings, you know, um, going and forming, uh, or all the X-Wings going to uh, go to the De uh, Death Star, the ones that are added, that's always been received. Well, of course, you know, uh, who shot first, Greedo or Han? Well, in the original version, Han's the only one to shoot, so that's kind of an odd thing, but I guess... Han only shot doesn't sound so cool, but by doing that, that also kind of says you're acknowledging George Lucas is correct that, yes, Greedo did shoot, even though that wasn't seen until 1997. Um, now, the reason I'm talking about even, or mentioning even all of these is because, well, in certain states uh, here in America, uh, 13, and I don't recall all 13 offhand, but can I do that and make it look sort of cool or no? Eh. Whatever. But in 13 of these in states, 13 states, You know, all of these films and plus the Disney continuations. Also, here's the Blu-ray set. They, uh, there is a marathon where uh, May 3rd starts off and you get to see the prequels first. Around 10 a.m. or so, I believe it was. And then afterwards, uh, it would go and then have like a 25 minute break or so because it would be just play until morning for the prequels throughout the night and then you'll get to have breakfast like a 25 minute break for breakfast and then have the original trilogy and then you'll get a 25 minute break for lunch and then if you're content if you're still going to be there for the ones made under disney then you'll get dinner afterwards but so you're like they're gonna provide food and stuff of that nature which i will say that is actually quite cool to hear but of course here in iowa uh we don't get anything like that in my state um and while 25 years ago got to see this uh, on my birthday my fifth birthday because i'm 30 today um that was sort of like a 
special thing because you know star wars is huge and you know if we're gonna have a you know it's one thing to have a premiere a few days early um as all these films did you know this one did properly come out on my birthday um, on may 16th and then revenge of the sith came out on my birthday at the con film festival as well as the New York premiere, so it, it this did come out on my birthday. So technically, all three of the prequels did uh, uh, have a, a at least one screening somewhere on my birthday. And I know uh, days or two prior, they did have uh, like the Los Angeles premiere or so. But yeah, it's kind of cool how you know on my birthday. Uh, and other people's birthdays who are on the on the 16th or today you know got to have their on like all three of the star wars prequels came out uh today um, but yeah um and the theater that i saw this film at uh for its 25th anniversary it did uh oh april Oh yeah, I filmed a video. Time to go for oh, Amadeus, and I guess I might have forgot to change that. Anyway, all the way through this video, it's finally May. So yeah, Yoda. Anyway. Uh, and the version that was... Uh, shown for this was the or 4k release or like this and so you got to see the cgi yoda you didn't get to see the puppet yoda which you know uh, even people who have been really fond of this film such as myself for years many people have complained that the puppet yoda in this doesn't look as good you know here obviously this is from empire strikes back and he looks good but you know people are like you know the yoda and this just look quite fake um and uh yeah i just i just love loved watching this and while i wasn't able to see a marathon of all these films in the theater specifically uh for me it would have been awesome to see all these three back to back and especially these two, because I've never seen these two on the big screen ever. I could have seen this four years ago. Um, but because of the whole way 2020 was, when things properly opened and new films were uh, in theaters, you know, this... You know, because I kind of waited a while to see if it will stay open and it did throughout the rest of the year but yeah all all of the showings for this from at least from the theater that i would go to where it was showing was they were all at night um and while i don't have a necessarily a bad or i don't ha i don't hate going to see theater or films in the theater at night I would prefer not to, you know, if it's one thing, if it's, you know, like late afternoon going into the evening where, you know, and depending on the year, it might start to get dark. Um, but yeah, I, 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 and especially in 2020, once everything started to reopen here, a whole lot of people were being, you know, even stupider than usual in terms of driving because like oh i can go and do this and that now i could you know, you know uh, things are basically normal again and now i can uh go about things you know fairly normal um so with people being quite insane out there i decided yeah no <laughs> If there's no daytime showings like like on weekends and stuff, 
because that play Empire Strikes Back played for quite some time. Uh, and so on one hand, there is was no excuse for me never going to see it in the theater. But on the other hand, because of the situation of how things were, and people being stupid a lot, you know, driving really fast, and in some cases driving stupid slow, and, uh, there's a lot of dumb people out on the road. Um, I'm not saying you, anybody watching is stupid, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, fools on the road that just shouldn't be driving but you know like over 16 so i can drive and, or have a license and not everybody should um but you know that that's i guess neither here nor there but if anything i would have loved to have seen the marathon just so i could see all of six of these films especially again these two Really, this one especially, because this is my favorite movie of all time. And I do love this film. And this film. And actually, I love all these films. I have this here because, well, this is 25 years old. And I love it. It's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Um, 25 years later. People love it more. And honestly... Again, I always thought the prequels would always uh, be more appreciated as time went on. Um, of course, with the Disney, uh, the films made under Disney's ownership, uh, the, that kind of made uh, these films uh, look uh, seemingly better. Uh, 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 faster than perhaps normally would have gone, but uh, I guess if anything that might be a bad thing, because then there will be people who will say, uh, people are only saying these are good because they're disappointed and don't like the Disney ones, like if those films never existed I, I guess people wouldn't be looking back on the prequels very kindly and again, I've always disagreed with that. I thought as time went on, people would relook at these films. And sure, they might not think, oh, well, prequels are superior in every way to these movies. Um, I always thought these three would be looked at, uh, be received a lot more warm. And it looks like as time has gone on, that is the case. Um, So at home, I decided to again have a marathon of all of six films, you know, and just enjoy things uh, at home. I guess be a little more comfortable, even though at the theater I'm never un I'm never you know uncomfortable at the whenever I'm at the theater, which is nice. I know some people aren't fond fond of the. Uh, theater due to people talking thankfully that hasn't really happened much uh, whenever i've gone to the theater to see a film be it a brand new film or a re-release <laughs> um so yeah uh, if they ever did have a, a marathon of these films i would absolutely go see that in a heartbeat um, because with the, what they added with all those nine films, as well as all the various breaks that would be, that would occur during such a thing, it was going to be about 20 hours or so, like over 20 hours. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Um, you know, these six alone, you know, if you were to watch them just back to back, with no breaks of any kind, for whatever reason. You know, these are all about within, like, a little over two hours uh, each, all under two, two and a half. So you probably would be able to watch these within, um, if you don't count breaks, like between 12 to, and 13 hours or so. 
with breaks probably be about 13 a little over 13 hours so you could absolutely go from like in the morning to the evening watching all these films and then you know hopefully you know if you're like me you enjoy star wars that's a good time to be had um, but if you're not too fond of star wars um that might be a bit much um uh, and today i will uh get, watch this film especially today um i love to watch my favorite movie on my birthday um plus being may i always see this time of year as star wars time basically because you know these six films all came out in may and yeah i just see may as the star wars month and i know may 4th you know is you know may the 4th be with you you know star wars day i've always thought you know star wars day would be the 25th which this year may 25th is on a saturday which would be which is, yeah uh, three weeks exactly from may 4th so yeah there you go yeah three but i'm okay you know my math wasn't totally off. So sometimes I often second guess myself, or I don't always do math uh, super well. But anyway, I I love this film. I love all these films, um, and I know I talk about Star Wars every time it's my birthday. But I figure, you know, it's a tradition at this point. So, hey, it's not a bad thing. It's nice to revisit these films, be they uh, released on the big screen or not. Um, what do you enjoy? Uh, films, certain films. It's just nice to look back on them and... obviously rewatch them but yeah i just love seeing these films and i love whenever they get re-released release order is and then chronological order yeah. I'm glad these came into existence like this like these releases so that way yeah it does save on shelf space was the real reason I got these and they weren't super expensive either so yeah and plus it's always nice to watch this in high definition and look at all the extras on here and uh, that could come with these releases yeah I love Star Wars uh, obviously I know that's apparent calendar hat and shirt I seem to wear this all the time on my birthday seems like that's, it's not a bad thing I don't believe um, but yeah the Phantom Menace you know I know Jar Jar isn't a huge fan favorite but and you know, I've never hated him um, serves a purpose in the film you know he able to help uh, bring things together in such a way that if he wasn't in the film uh, wouldn't have necessarily been possible so that's a <clears throat> that's a good thing uh, especially with the plot and 
also it's cool to see just how everything starts to uh, move in terms of getting uh, getting towards the original trilogy, you know, slowly, and then um, you know having the characters we know, like Obi Wan, like by Ewan McGregor, and Anakin Skywalker, by Jake Lloyd in this film, and C three PO, R two D two, Yoda, you know. See how they were back then, yeah, like uh, chronologically, and see how everything just turns out. Obviously, with the original trilogy, um, and see how the Emperor starts to, you know, move forward to manipulate the system in order to eventually gain control of everything. And I know a lot of people say, well, the whole taxation thing, you know, that's kind of stupid that a big dispute happens because of that. That's a dumb thing. Like, well, you know, things like that, you know, what might sound like a stupid, dumb thing. You know, a lot of wars <laughs> over the years have been started over small things that be, when you really look at them, seem might seem quite trivial, but at the time it was a huge thing. And, uh, yeah, sometimes war breaks out from these small things. Um, perhaps in some cases, it seems like a stupid thing. And perhaps rightfully, yeah, it was kind of a stupid thing, perhaps. But, again, you know, wars do happen, you know, here on Earth, as we know. And in a galaxy far, far away. So, hey. The story and characters are uh, always interesting to watch. And always engaging and entertaining. And sure, some of the dialogue isn't the best. But, you know, there's a lot of melodrama in these films. You know, it's supposed to be like, you know, throwbacks to the 1930s space opera serials and the acting is theatrical just like <clears throat> what you would see back in the 30s you know where there was a an absolute definite transition especially with sound film being uh fairly new you know quite new at the time and so a lot of people were uh, would act it would be in the theater uh, what to go into films and then you know some of that theatrical style acting would be implemented in various films various parts and done quite well and George Lucas is able to capture that kind of thing quite well with Star Wars um Yeah, I'm just, I'd be just continuing to talk, but I really love Star Wars, as you no doubt all know, but yeah, I hope uh, all of you are doing well, I hope all of you are having a great day, and if it happens to be your birthday also, today, happy birthday, if it was earlier in the week, happy birthday, if it was after today, well, happy birthday, and yeah. Anyway, I hope all of you are doing just well in general. Have a great uh, rest of your day. Have a great rest of your week, also, because tomorrow will be Friday. Um, and have a great weekend. Hope all of you will have a great uh, next week, too. Hope your May is going well. Things are going well for me. And, uh, yeah, I will probably soon have a video about some of the movies I've picked up. If it's not at the end of this month, probably the beginning of next. So just uh, prepare for that. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> all right. I hope all you are doing well. Please take care. 
And again, have a great day. Bye.